I was on the main turnpike. I was driving a car with my new wife, Etta Mae. We'd been married a couple of days before and we were on our honeymoon and traffic stopped. Tractor trailer didn't stop. My wife was killed and I was, I was pretty messed up for a while. The year was 1992 and David was 42 years old. At the time, I couldn't walk, um, so I was in a wheelchair and um, couldn't eat because I couldn't swallow. Um, I would choke. Cognitively, I was not in great shape. My wife had been killed. Emotionally, I was devastated. Um, and the worst part of it was I had no idea if this is the way it was going to be forever. The fear of the unknown is the fear of many. Over 4,000 people incur brain injury in New Hampshire each year. David Crumples is just one of them. After years of struggle, litigation and the courts offered him some relief. I was flat broke, desperately broke, and all we were looking to do was somehow give me a chance to get going again. Um, the jury came back with a verdict that was many times what we would have gladly settled for. And um, all of a sudden, in simple per terms, all of a sudden I was a rich man. And like most rich men, David now presides over a board bearing his name. My recommendation would be to fund it. Welcome to the monthly meeting of the Kremples Grants and Resources Committee, part of the Kremples Brain Injury Foundation. And unlike most boards, its goal is not to make money, but to give it away. This is David's way of helping others ease the pain and fear of what he himself went through. I recommend they explore other transportation options and look into uh, chemo at WDH because Lisa Hansen is the Director of Grants and Resources, which gives assistance, both financial and advisory, to individuals affected by brain injury in times of crisis. Since 1995, the board has awarded over 540 grants, totaling over $876,000. Nita had a serious brain injury, um, traumatic brain injury, brain tumor, or stroke. Um, they need to have uh, some financial need. Their request needs to relate to their brain injury. Um, and we need, to, we need to look at their situation and see if it will make a difference. And we're going to get ready and go for a ride? Okay. Do you want to go to Shaw's? Yes, I can do. You want to go to Keene? Okay, we'll go to Keene. Matthew came home in a coma, and he was in a coma for about eight months. Um, they said he'd never speak. Um, and he did. He did. They actually that, that was two years ago. Rhonda Smith reached out for funding for repairs to a donated wheelchair accessible van for her son Matthew. The van has helped, oh God, because we, we didn't have that for like the first six months at, when he was out of his coma. So like if he need, just to go to a doctor's appointment, we had to call an ambulance. He likes going for rides. Is that better? That's better? Okay. Budget for March is... To keep operating costs down, Lisa works part-time. Helping her keep her head above water is a steady stream of University of New Hampshire social work interns. Do you have the applications back in November? To be able to um, talk on the phone with somebody and hear their struggles, um, hear their appreciation, or see them um, with so much value and dignity and worth. I learn way more from those experiences than I would from any book. How do we do thumbs up? They see that these people have so much value and they're not so different and the peop the person in the grocery store who maybe looks like they have a problem is someone who is just a regular person who we don't know what they've been through um, but to treat them like a person with value Nyla Hiltz of Hookset is a stroke survivor 
her injury put a halt to her normal active life. Very, very full and very busy. I'm an RN and I had a private practice in nursing. Okay, it's my first play. Okay. Okay. Nyla's husband, primary caregiver, and cribbage okay. partner George reached out to Krumpels for help with respite care and a walk-in shower. And I loved that when I got in that shower and I could just shower normally, that was wonderful. It was like I was given a million dollars. There's lots of rocks down there. Do you think there's any fishies? It really put my faith back into like the human race. I was so surprised at how many people there were out there that really cared. All right, let's walk this way, bud. Donna Baruby of Durham <laughs> applied for a grant after learning that her one-year-old son, Jeffrey, had brain cancer. She received money for a dependable used car to drive Jeffrey to and from treatments at Dartmouth Hitchcock. And it was a huge thing because I was going to be making trips back and forth to Lebanon from Manchester, which is where I was living. So, I mean, it was just gigantic. It was the biggest help. The biggest of help returned investments unfold. There's been no new tumor growth. Um, he'll still have to have an MRI once a year for the rest of his life, but yeah, he's doing great. He's doing awesome, better than any of us could have expected. Have you gotten Ashley's grades yet? No. When do your grades come out? Tomorrow. Yeah. It's really good to have friends and family because you can't, like, do everything yourself. At 10 months old, James Sorby of Moultonboro was diagnosed with a very serious brain tumor. Fortunately, James recovered, but unfortunately, he had health complications when he was 12 that required him to stay home from school for an extended period of time. His grant helped him maintain his schoolwork. I like to thank them because they gave me a computer and they really helped me along. If I didn't have the computer, I would have probably had to stay back. James is applying to several colleges to study psychology. Because I want to help kids like me and help with their problems that they're having. We can't take away the pain. We can't make them um, able to meet all their expenses for the rest of their lives, but we can give them a little hope. We can give them support. We can show them that we care. And even if we can't financially help someone in the future, they know that they have a place where they can call um, and connect. You never dream that it's you. Um, it was me. It is my attorney's daughter. It is the people that you work with, your parents. It is far more prevalent than people realize, and it's a matter really of giving back to the people who are around us, to our own community. What do you think it's making the bubbles bubble?